Hey guys, it's Maddie from Let's Eat Plants, and today we're gonna try an easy sourdough sandwich bread. Now, as you guys probably know, sourdough starters are all the rage these days. It seems like everybody who is stuck at home has been trying their hand and making a sourdough starter and therefore also sourdough bread. So you guys may recognize Bob from previous episodes. I have made sourdough crackers with him. I've made sourdough muffins with him. I've made sourdough brownies with him. But actually, I've only mainly been using the discard of my sourdough starter. I have made one sourdough loaf so far based on a recipe that I found, and I just didn't feel like it was very soft, like the same kind of bread that you would buy from the store. So I just did a quick Google search for vegan sourdough sandwich bread, and I found this recipe from thecleverCarrot.com. The recipe was not originally vegan, but it is really easy to veganize. We just switch out the regular butter for vegan butter and yeah, that's what we're going to try today. Now, this recipe does say to let your bread rise overnight if your house is around 68 degrees Fahrenheit. Currently, my house is about 75 degrees Fahrenheit because it's summer, so I wanted to try making it during the daytime to make sure that I could watch the bread and to make sure that it doesn't more than double because you don't want to overproof your bread. That's just what I read on all the sourdough forums, so I just decided to start it in the morning and then hopefully it will finish rising by the evening and I can bake it tonight. That's the hope anyway. So with that, let me show you guys what I've done already to start this bread. So here we are now, it's been about two hours since I put the dough into this clear Tupperware. And the reason that I use this glass Tupperware is so that I can easily tell when it has doubled. I read this hack online that says you should use something clear with like pretty straight sides so you can easily tell when the dough has doubled. If you use a bowl where you can't see the sides, it might be more difficult to tell when it's doubled. So we're just gonna let this continue to grow. Hopefully it will double in size within the next six or so hours and then we will just shape it, let it do one more rise and then bake it. Knowing me, I will probably be baking bread at like midnight, but that's fine. <laughs> Better that than to have overproofed bread, right?
Okay, it is the next morning. Our bread is finally finished. And yes, that took a lot longer than I thought it would. Let's see, I started the first rise around 10.30 and it didn't finish until 7.30. So the first rise itself took around nine hours which in hindsight would have been fine to let it rise overnight, wake up and do the second rise in the morning. But I am really glad that I watched it closely the first time because like I said, I'm such a novice baker that I really wanted to make sure that I didn't mess it up. So then I started the second rise at around eight o'clock and that took another three and a half hours. I was waiting for the loaf to get like one inch above the loaf pan and that was taking quite a while. So I just let it keep going and keep rising and that took around three and a half fish hours. So at around 11.30, I put it in the oven at 375 degrees for 45 minutes. So I did end up doing a little bit of midnight baking, but it wasn't too bad. It finished around 12.30. And oh my gosh, it smelled so amazing last night. Of course, I really wanted to cut into it right then and there, but you are supposed to let bread fully cool on the inside. And it was like 12.30. I wasn't about to have a piece of bread <laughs> right before I went to bed. So I'm really excited to cut into this right now. I have no idea what it looks like on the inside. Hopefully it tastes good. Hopefully that whole day of baking yesterday wasn't wasted. So we have it right here. Let's cut into it. It looks so nice. It looks like a real sandwich loaf. So the last sourdough bread that I made, the crust was really hard on the outside and it was soft on the inside, but I was looking for something more sandwich loafy. So this is like feeling really soft and squishy. And I mean, it looks like a legit little sandwich loaf inside. So I'm pretty excited about this. The smell is amazing. Oh, I love sourdough so much, you guys. Like I grew up eating it and it's just one of my most favorite breads. Okay, the only thing we have left to do is taste this and then we can start making some sandwiches, some avocado toasts, maybe even some vegan French toast. I love sourdough. I'm just like so happy right now. I also love how easily this cuts because the last one I made, like I said, the crust was really thick and crunchy and really difficult to cut. So this crust is like, ooh, so nice. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> I can't believe I made this. I am not even joking with you guys. This bread is so good. And I mean, I'm just eating it plain, not even toasted or with anything on it. Wow, this is impressive. If you guys are looking for a sourdough sandwich loaf and you already have a sourdough starter started, definitely make this bread. This is one of the best breads I have ever made. Not that I've made a lot of bread, but you know what I'm saying. Homemade, really easy to make, really, really good sourdough flavor. There's plenty of that sour tang going on in the flavor and it's perfectly soft. This is gonna make great sandwich bread. It's gonna be great for toasting. I'm just really happy with this bread right now. So just one tip that I wanna point out if you are a new bread baker like me, I do think it's safe enough to let this bread rise overnight. However, if you do live in a really hot place, you might wanna do it in the daytime and just watch it and kinda of see how your bread reacts to the heat and how quickly it rises just for your first time. You might wanna start a little bit earlier than 10.30 because in hindsight, that was, that was kind of late to start my bread, but it did work out in the end and I was able to complete the baking process in one day. Since it was my first time, it was just really helpful to kind of watch it rise in person and just see how quickly it was rising. And now next time I can rise it overnight because I know approximately how long it'll take for that first rise. So anyway, I will leave the original recipe down below. Definitely try this if you are a fan of sourdough and if you already have a sourdough starter started. If you don't have a sourdough starter started and you are interested in starting one, I will leave some video resources for that as well. If you're a fan of sourdough like me, I highly recommend starting a starter because it is really easy. I did have a few problems at the beginning, but I think that's pretty common. Everybody goes through that. So if you have any questions, just leave it in a comment down below. I'll be more than happy to try and answer them for you. I mean, I'm not an expert or anything, but I have been through quite a bit in the last two months with my sourdough starter, Bob. So I should be able to answer some basics. And yeah, I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. Don't forget to subscribe. I'm making new videos every week, bringing you vegan recipes and whole food plant-based recipes for you to make at home. And with that, let's eat plants and I will see you guys next time. Bye.